Module 4, again, consists of two chapters, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. So in Chapter 7, it's about speed. So we'll start our lesson with Lesson 1, which is Speed and Distance. So uh, the book uses the word speed, but other books will use the word rate. So when they say speed, that's just the same as the rate. Okay, so again, since I'm using the book and I'm teaching from the book, I will follow what the book uses, which is speed. Okay, so we need a few formulas for this lesson, one of which is distance is equal to speed times Okay, now from this formula, if we know this formula, we should be able to come up with two different formulas. One for speed, which is distance divided by time, and the other one for time, which is distance divided by speed. Okay, so I will in the long-term discussion just call this distance is equal to speed times time. And I will call this speed is equal to distance over time. And I will call this time is equal to distance divided by speed. So again, um, the book offers in this lesson two different methods of solving. We need to know both, especially if there's a guided question uh, that's given to the kids. But uh, the first method is the ratio approach. So the ratio approach is ideal technically for mental solving. Okay, however, the second formula, which is the formula approach, is actually better if you're using your calculator. Okay, so which do I prefer? It depends on what's being used. So again, method one is for mental solving or without calculator, and method two is with calculator. Um, in the long run, it's actually better to do that with a formula so that the kids will remember. Okay, now, um, it's important, like I said in the last module, that if the kids are given uh, data or information about the problem or a given about the problem, make sure to write it down together with the formulas being used. This is good training for the kids. So our lesson will begin on page 10. So there will be two pages I'll be doing from page 10 and page 12. But I'll start with page 10. Okay, the problem says the speed of a train is 120 kilometers per hour. So that means speed is 120 kilometers per hour. Okay, so again, the book uses H for R. If you've been accustomed to writing HR for R, then that's fine, okay, because that's just a symbol. Okay, then it says how far can it travel in five minutes. So that means the distance is what we're looking for and the time given is five minutes. Okay, so I'll do the two methods. Method one, I'll write here. Okay, it has five minutes is equal to blank hours. Okay, so it wants us to first convert the minutes to hours, which means this is five 60th of an R. So we need to know that an R is 60 minutes. Okay, so then it says 1 R is the 120 kilometers. Okay, so this is blank. So that's there. 1 R per means 1 R and then 120 kilometers in 1 R. Okay, then it says blank R 
and arrow blank times blank. Okay, so which means this blank is the 560th. Okay, which means this will be 120 times 560th. So whether you put the 120 or the 120 here or here, it's the same because we've learned from before that multiplication can switch. Okay, so which means if we multiply this out, that means that that will be 10. Okay, so that will be 10 kilometers. Okay, so this is the book approach for the ratio. For me, that is equivalent to the equivalent fraction approach. So I'll show my way of doing method one um, without all of this gibberish that we just wrote. Okay, we'll get to the point. Okay, and then we'll do the method two after. Okay, so the way that I would do it is 120 kilometers is equal to 60 minutes. So why did I put 60 minutes? Because that's one hour, which is 60 minutes. And I know that the time that I'm given is in minutes. So which means the question is how far? In five minutes. So again, the equivalent fraction approach we need to make sure that the kilometer and the kilometer are on top of each other and the minutes and the minutes are on top of each other so that they're equivalent in nature. Okay, so which means there's two ways of doing this. I could go like that, that's divided by two, which means this must also be divided by two. So if I divide by two going that way, this must be 10. So that's our 10. Okay, but I can also go like this, divided by 12, which means this is also divided by 12. So again, that's the beauty of the equivalent fraction approach because it's easier for the brain cells to figure out if it's easier to multiply across or down below. Okay, now the book approach for method two is to use the formula. So since we're looking for the distance, the formula is the speed times the time. Okay, so which means if that speed is in hours, I need to make that so that's 5 over 60th of an R. So that means this will be 120 times 5 60th. Okay, now again, if we want to put in our calcul, this is easier to do. Formula, okay. So, which means in the end, this also will give us 10 kilometers. Continuing on to page 12, problem 4B says, Farah cycles from her home to the beach at a speed of 18 meters per second. So, that's a given. I'll write it down. 18 meters per second. Okay, the distance between her home and the beach is 1,350 meters. So that's also a given, 1,350 meters. Okay, then it says, how long does, will, it, will she take to cycle from her home to the beach? Which means we're looking for the time. Okay, in this particular case, they want us to solve using the formula. And they gave the formula. So they said time is equal to distance divided by speed. Okay, so which means this will be 1350 divided by 18. If we put this in our calc or our calculator, and it's okay to put in our calculator because there's a calculator figure, the answer should be 75 seconds. Okay, but I'll show the equivalent fraction approach. So this is 18 meters is equal to one second. Okay, then this is 1350 meters question mark. Okay, so which means here I could divide by 18, which means this is divide by 18. So again, I could figure this out, but that's harder mentally. So that's why this is going to be still 75 seconds. Now, again, parents, there's formulas. If we want to use the calculator, that's ideal to use. But if we want to solve mentally, 
then ideal to use will be the equivalent fraction method or the ratio method. That concludes lesson one of chapter seven. I'll see you in the next lesson.